Hi, Sheiks. Welcome back to another episode of Life of a Sheik. And today we have with us on our channel, B. Ruth Lawrence. So before we ask Miss Lawrence any questions, before you know we get into the conversation, I want to read an excerpt of Miss Lawrence's biography. So you call it, right? <laughs> so Ruth Lawrence, empowerment specialist and life speaker, has spent over a decade of giving her life to servicing her country in the area of youth development. Her passion for service found her utilizing her talents in the fine arts, children, youth, and outreach ministries at her church. It was at this time her passion to both serve her church and her community which contributed to her being awarded the Prime Minister's Youth Award for Excellence, Jamaica's highest national honor for youth, in the year 2011. Ruth is a former youth ambassador to the United Nations General Assembly and has represented Jamaica overseas in countries of Latin America, Caribbean, Europe, and the continent of Africa. She holds a postgraduate certificate from the Entrepreneurship Institute of India in empowering, empowering women in entrepreneurship. She is a graduate of the University of the, U of the West Indies, Mona, where she completed her Bachelor of Science in Management Studies, Marketing. She holds local, regional, and international certification from Ministry of Health, Health Herbert Stifton, CARICOM, UI, Open Campus, UNFPA, UN Women, UNESCO, among others. Guys, I'm reading this. My mind is twisting up. My tongue is twisting up. And you'll know this woman, you'll, you'll, you won't even know any of this. You know, I'm shocked right now. So, guys, please welcome Miss Ruth Lawrence to Life of a Sheep. Miss Ruth, how are you wow. feeling today? Thank you, Joshua. I'm great. How are you? Well, I'm fine enough. Can't complain at all. It's truly an honor and a pleasure to have you here with us on, you know, our program. Mm -hmm. So, you know, before we get into your achievements, before we get into who you are now, we want to know a little bit about your, upgrade, your upbringing, I should say. What was your early life like? You know, could you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. It's always my pleasure to share um, where I'm coming from. Um, well, I actually grew up in a, an inner city community called Jonestown. For persons who might know of Jonestown are, are where they call AKA jungle, but Jonestown is where I was, where I was born and raised for most of my life, for 15 years of my life, actually. Um, and I moved out of that community at the age of 15 to another community. But most of my young life would have been spent in uh, Jonestown. So I attended Jonestown Primary and then I matriculated from there to the St. Hughes High School where I actually passed my GSAT to begin my secondary education. So I am a proud, proud um, <laughs> I would say I'm a proud um, woman, uh, a proud product of what they would call the ghetto. And at the end of the day, most of what I know now and, and most of the life experiences that I have now would have been garnered from there. So, yeah, I'm really proud of, of, of that. Wow, truly inspiring. That inspired me really just that. Um, what are some of the challenges, you know, you face growing up in an inner city community. A lot of persons just care about these communities. They probably drive past it on their way going home or, you know, traversing Kingston, but they don't know what happens. Here. You know, could you tell us about, you know, some of your experiences living in an inner city community as well as, you know, your school life and mm -hmm. all of that? Sure. Uh, well, the beauty about where I grew up, um, uh, and I say beauty because in everything you have to find the good in it. Um, one of the things that I appreciated with where I 
was raised is the fact that I was surrounded by family. Uh, I, I had my mother, I had my aunts, I had my cousins, basically, and I had my uncles. Uh, but equally so in any uh, inner city community, you're always going to have uh, violence, you know, incidences of violence, uh, whether it be gun violence, stabbings, or whatever the case may be. So that was sort of a part of our norm within the society, within that area rather, because again, you do have persons from varying backgrounds. And whenever you have persons from varying backgrounds and not only varying backgrounds, but when you have persons who have varied circumstances as well, uh, in terms of the single parent family, you know, um, children who would have gone awry because of struggles they would be facing, you'll always have that level of conflict. Um, but one of the things I appreciated when I was growing up is the fact that uh, I, I, I was associated with, with my church. And that for me sort of um, channeled my, my, my attention to more positive things um, that I could do it. Uh, that, that, that there was more than, than what I saw within my community. Many of the friends I had uh, at that level um, would not have seen many of the places that I would have seen by virtue of the fact that I was associated with a church that went on many trips, you know, um, helped you to dream, helped to sort of hone your vision for your life. Um, so I, I, I would like to say that I was somewhat privileged um, to be exposed um, to the things that existed outside of where I was. Um, so that for me, you know, kind of coined and influenced how it is that I interacted with the world, how I saw the world, my aspirations, my dreams. And I, I, I can tell you that as a result, one of the 11 uh, students really that actually matriculated to a traditional high school. So you could see where there was a, there was a lot of disparity in terms of the, the, the educational delivery and how the role rather that parents played in that process because my mother was a no-nonsense person. My mother was the type of person who said, listen, if she had to go find wherever she has to find the money from, I had to go to um, evening class. I had to have all my books so I could study. I could not come home like some students and grown up and play. That was not, my mother would not have it. And so she understood at that early age the importance of an education and she instilled the values that... Um, uh, kind of bolstered then my desire, you know, for academic, for achieving academic excellence and even just dreaming for bigger and better that one day this is not going to be my reality, but that I could actually aspire to bigger, better and greater things. There were nights, Joshua, I can tell you, where gunshots were blazing through the community and I had to be under my bed trying to study.